I'm here to pick up my new Tesla. Great. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, yeah. How do you charge it? I got you. There we go. Uh, uh, here. So this one talks about all the wattage and the voltage, everything you know about electricity. And I got another one. This book cat. Wait, where'd you go? I'm just getting to the good part. Okay, so it's really not that difficult, but it's really important to know a few things to really understand how to do this, you know, at home and, you know, on the go, right? So let's talk about what you actually get with your car when you first buy your Tesla. So you're gonna get this beautiful Tesla bag and actually it's changed over the years of what you get. So what you'll get is what we call the mobile connector like this. And you're also going to get, uh, it's called a 515, right? And this is like typical 110 volt. And this is what you use on extension cord or just a standard volt. The other thing that's not here, that's in my other car actually, is going to be the J1772 adapter. And that's also going to be very, very common if you're using a non-Tesla charger. There are actually three levels of charging. There's going to be level one, two, and three for the most part, right? One is going to be really, really slow, right? You're talking about, you know, the 110 volt that we just talked about. Level two is going to be your medium charging and it's typically like a charge point and it's going to be like 18, 20 miles. Right, so it's relatively a lot faster than level one. However, it's still uh, a little slower. And then you get to the level three and these are typically gonna be like super fast, right? You're looking at um, going uh, 1000 miles per hour on a supercharger, right? So that's a big difference. So we're gonna be actually covering all of those levels uh, throughout today. So we're gonna try to um, divvy this up in two different categories. One is gonna be at home. What are your options when you're at home? And we're going to cover all the options and the costs and everything associated with that and the other thing we're going to cover is going to be on the go charging right what are your options there costs what you need and etc so hopefully you guys can join us and learn a thing or two but let's get right into it so the most affordable option in charging is going to be using what you have right so as mentioned before you're going to have this beautiful bag with a mobile connector and in the mobile connector you're gonna have two parts to it, right? So you have your adapters, this is called a 515 or 110 volt, and then you have the mobile connector. And the way it works is all you have to do is just connect it like that. And then obviously this one goes into the car and this goes into the outlet. So this outlet, it uses a standard 110 volt and you just plug it in and you can see that it already lights up. And when it charges, it's gonna be doing this like trickle thing, right? Or it's gonna be going green like that once it's charging. Uh, typically, I use this when I go to like family Thanksgiving trips. They don't have a super, or they don't have a charger in general. So, and typically I'm not driving around. So having, um, this charges like two to four miles an hour. So having this uh, is not, I mean, it's great, right? Cause I'm getting charged and I'm staying there for three, four nights. And then by the time I leave, I'm almost full or full. Right, so this does take a long time. So something that's a little bit more sustainable is gonna be using the NEMA 1450. And again, this actually doesn't come with the car anymore. It used to, uh, but you can buy this on the Tesla website and it's exactly the same, right? So you wanna remove the 110 one and then you just remove this. Oh, cold. So I can't feel my fingers. You just put this in and then you plug it in. Um, I don't have a NEMA 1450 and we're gonna to get to talk about what I use, right? But this is a lot more sustainable, right? This actually charges roughly about 30 miles per hour. And if you think about it, eight hours a night or something like that, that's 240 miles. So super sustainable, this is fast enough. All you need is this adapter. And when you get an electrician out, just ask them to install a NEMA 1450, which is typically a little bit cheaper than installing a Tesla charger as well. This is actually good for daily use, honestly. Um, it does enough miles. And for me though, personally, I would, I, would I, don't, I don't mind paying for convenience. And that's where we get at, right? So we're gonna talk about uh, what I use, which is gonna be the Tesla wall connector. So in my case, I have a Tesla wall connector installed. This is also called high power wall connector. And this is a gen three version. And ours is actually skinned. Uh, we actually sell this in multiple colors. So get yours at tesla.com. But this is actually on 60 amps and it is, two, um, it is getting 240. So you're actually gonna be charging 40 miles per hour. So that's a lot. And we have two Teslas in our house, so it is important for us to get that extra miles so that we're, we can share it, right? Um, Cause we only have one charger. So this costs quite a bit though. It's $500 and then you need an electrician to also install it. So when would I use it? I would absolutely use this. This is great for home use. And on top of that, uh, the gen three version, 
also has wireless capability. So this connects to your Wi-Fi home network. And for businesses, you can actually schedule and also cut off if you want to <laughs> for your neighbors, right? So this is really cool. Um, it's really, really easy to use. Once you install it, you just use the button just like the other one. And once you click on it, your charge port opens up and you just plug it in and very, very easy. You know, why would I use this? One other thing is if you travel, every time you travel, you have to take out your mobile connector and make sure you have it in your car, right? I always leave my mobile connector just in my car or frunk and then I can just use this. So you kind of risk, I guess, leaving your mobile connector if you're traveling because you need to bring that everywhere. Uh, that's almost like, in a way, like a flat tire emergency, you at least can charge your car uh, using a 110 outlet. So that's kind of the reason why I like having this. We have one in our office and we have one in our home. Another thing to note is that these chargers are also called destination chargers. And these are the ones that you typically find in hotels, right? So they'll charge the same uh, 40 miles per hour fairly fast. So you can actually find that in the Tesla uh, monitor, right? So when you click on supercharger, if you click on the little icon, you can actually see all the other, uh, I guess, level two chargers out there as well. Um, so now that you know about some of the options, we're going to go ahead. It's really cold inside. So we're going to go inside and look at some apps of what you need to know uh, to, I guess, plan your route when you're on the go. Oof, now that we're back inside, we're going to go over some of the apps that I like to keep in my phone, um, especially when traveling. So the first thing I want to talk about is ABRP. And what that is, it's called a better route planner. Right, and what you can do is, especially when I'm doing longer trips, I use this to kind of plan out your uh, waypoints and then figure out where chargers are, what kind of chargers and so on. I honestly like to use a desktop version, but it's nice to have in your phone for on the go planning. But you can see right here, you could kind of put your uh, starting point, your end point, you could add as many uh, waypoints that you want, and also as amenity and all that. So it's really, really easy to use and straightforward. The other app that I love is PlugShare. And PlugShare is actually, um, it compiles and aggregates pretty much every type of charger there is around you, right? And a lot of it is also community-based, so they'll add it, they'll add photos on how it is, they review it. But you can see around me over here, you can see that there is an elite airport parking and there is a Tesla charger. And you could kind of zoom in and click on it, click on the little eye, and it also has photos that people have uh, put. So it also gives you some amenities and um, like what there are, like I guess like restaurants and so on. For the supercharging and Tesla stuff, honestly, that's not what I use PlugShare for because your, your car, your Tesla does a really good job of telling you which super station to stop and it also shows the destination, right? But it doesn't show up stuff like charge points or EVGOs or Electrify America, right? So that's where I use um, this for. And one thing to keep in mind once you find these chargers that are near you, um, what you want to do is you got to know who it is, right? Which charging company it is, right? So there are so many out there uh, and that's why Tesla charging is so convenient. You literally just push the button and then you plug it in, right? But honestly, from my experience of owning Teslas, I found that the charge point does probably one of the best job. And especially this can be different depending on where you live. But in Chattanooga, Tennessee, there are charge points around downtown. And when I used to live in downtown, honestly, I used to charge for free and the app is very very easy to use and it's just very simple and uh, since it's free it uses nfc so i'm going to go over that next so we're at an ev go charging unit and this was actually a level three or it can be a lot higher and the way this works is you have to use an app so again like i said earlier in the play share you have to make sure that you have their app and you have to set it up before you even get there or else it could be a pretty bad experience when you're trying to in the cold try to set it all up right so this one is actually what I typically use if I were to use it. This is Chattermo and you need a big adapter. Um, I don't have it with me, but you pretty much connect it just like you did with a J1772 and then you connect it. And this particular one gets 50 kilowatts, uh, 50 kilowatts, right? So the other thing to keep in mind is they do pricing by uh, the minute. So it's about 35 cents uh, per minute. So um, it can actually quite get expensive. But if you need a quick charge in a pinch, it's nice to have an option that's a little bit faster than a level two. You can see here that it also has a CCS combo. Um, so it has different ones for other cars. So just to give you a perspective, this again is about 50 kilowatt, right? A supercharger is about 250. And 
in I guess speed it's gonna be about two hours to charge your Tesla to a full charge and if I'm being honest I really haven't used this at all for the whole three years of my ownership so we're gonna get right next to the next one so we're here at the charge point and this is honestly one of my favorite ones when I was in downtown Chattanooga I was using this all the time and it's fairly easy again a reminder if you have uh, if you're using other than a Tesla charger you want to make sure that you sign up at charge point and get your billing set up and once you do all your phones are connected or you can use NFC and all you have to do is just tap it like that and then it automatically it allows you to confirm it and then it actually authorizes it right here and it says plug in and then you could just remove this and you want to use an adapter like this and this is a J1772 that I mentioned and one thing to keep in mind is because you just need to do this and um, anyone can really remove it uh, there's a 3d printed thing that I'm going to be putting down in the link below where you could put where it'll lock this right so let's go ahead and um, open this up and again just plug it in I, I plugged this in uh, it's not working and you can actually tell that it's not working if this doesn't turn green right so right now it's white it doesn't actually recognize it and one thing that I was worried about is if you look at this charger I'm gonna unplug it it's actually broken this lever is supposed to be able to be pushed and I read on the charge point app and also the, the plug share app that this was vandalized and that it was broken so it's very important to check those comments because it's community based before you come here unfortunately I can't charge and we're gonna go on to the next so we're at the supercharger right now in Chattanooga and if you are actually traveling you should probably skip this one because it is loud it's by the airport it's weird getting in here however this is going to be the most common one that you're going to be using when you're traveling and there's actually three types right right or out there really there's going to be the gen 2 which are going to be these and the way you tell it is going to be the gauge of that right so these are going to be way thicker and then the gen 3 is going to be way thinner right so that's how i tell at least and then there's also going to be urban chargers right urban chargers are typical like in atlanta and they're a lot a little bit slower but they're still level three so they're a lot faster than your gen 2 your charge points uh, and the ones at your home right however those are really good because they, they can put a lot more and it's just a lot uh, more efficient right for cities especially so this is um this charges specifically this is gen 2 so this goes about roughly about 600 miles an hour and then the newer one is impressively around like a thousand miles an hour right and this is uh depending on your state of charge it can go from 20 to typically 80 percent is going to be your optimal zone if you're under that it's going to be a little bit slower and then once you get to the 80 we call that the slowdown rate and then it goes a lot slower right so typically i don't charge past that 80 percent and the best thing about this is super easy you don't need an adapter it goes straight into the plug and all you have to do is just go here click on this it opens up then it goes like that and you go in and you watch your netflix so <laughs> really really simple you don't have to do any apps and then the way it works is for charging and payment uh it's already linked to your tesla account so your payment just comes with a credit card that you already put on file uh so very very seamless experience and then it'll if you go to your tesla account you'll be able to tell how much you paid but typically my average is going to be four to about twelve dollars is how much i pay uh, the most i've actually ever paid is 16 dollars, so it's really not that much one thing to keep in mind about payments is that there are going to be idle fees right so for example if you leave this car you go fly to detroit and you leave this car you are going to have a lot of bill on your account so do not leave your car uh, this is not what it's for these are supposed to be uh, they're very fast and on the go so again you can get 200 miles and you know um, 15 20 minutes right super super fast especially for a version 3 right so when would i use this this is going to be your most common method of charging especially when you're traveling again there's a charger strategic place all around the u.s and around the world so wherever you're tra tra traveling most likely you'll be able to find something along the way but if you don't we have your back and we got your other options and in my personal opinion this is what tesla um uh, or what sets apart from the competition right now right you have the seamless experience for charging whereas other ones are still working on building that infrastructure hopefully that helped you guys cover a little bit basics of charging but i'm gonna leave you with a few 
good tips, right? The first thing is your battery percentage will differ based on weather and terrain. So try to keep between that 20 to 80% charged. That's a very good recommendation. Try not to go below 5%, but if you do, you crazy, right? So you wanna check your weather before you leave. Weather does affect battery range. The other thing is you want to charge to about 80% for 2021 um, or earlier years, but the newer ones with the LFP battery made in China, Tesla actually recommends charging all the way up to 100. Well, that pretty much covers it. Um, hopefully that helped you guys understand charging uh, on your Tesla and electric vehicles. If you have any questions, let us know and please help us out by subscribing. Until then, we'll see you next time. Stay charged.